unscrew the hinge on my head, open it up, and tell you everything that I can think of <laughs> that you need to know about stenciling, how to do it, how to get the best results, what you use for what, um, what not to do, and if you have never stenciled, this is perfect for you. If you have stenciled and sometimes you haven't gotten as good of a result as you wanted, this is a good video for you to watch. And if you just want to know how to take care of the stencils so that you can have them in your craft stash and use them for many years to come, this is a good video for you too. So, I have some notes that I'm kind of going to be following uh, and I'm going to show you some different things along the way. And um, if you can think of questions that you would really like to have me answer um, while I'm live, I'm just pinning a link here, feel free to ask and I will be keeping an eye on, uh, I will be keeping an eye on my comments as best I can if you're live. Okay, so what, what do I want to say about stenciling? Okay, well, first of all, just so you know, it is not brain surgery. And I hear from you guys all the time that you're afraid to try, or that you're afraid of your stencils, or that you're afraid you'll ruin them. Um, there's no reason to be afraid of them. It's not brain surgery. They are, uh, they are kind of like brand new babies. The first time you hold a brand new baby, you think, ah, I'm going to break it. Um, but then after you've, you know, maybe had a baby or two, or been around a baby or two, you realize that newborn babies are really not as fragile as you thought, and neither are your stencils. So, um, they're awesome. If you are not artistic, like me, uh, I'm crafty, but I couldn't draw a horse to save my life, um, then they're, they're a great crafting tool to have, and they're reusable, and so I'm just getting ready to tell you everything I can think of. So, when you get a stencil, and, and the ones I'm going to be talking about today are from magnoliadiy.com. They're not any other brand uh, or from a store. I'm specifically telling you about the Magnolia ones. Um, okay, so when they come, they're going to look like this. This is just one example. They have, they have seasonal, they have large patterns, they have funny, snarky sayings, they have tons of faith, they have Bible verses, um, they have all every holiday you could think of. They have a ton of different ones. But this is what they look like when they're brand new. They come on a carrier sheet like this. Um, if it's a multi-piece stencil, they'll have these white lines that you can just cut. And they do actually have some scissors that are called stencil cutter or scissors or something um, that you can use, but you can use a regular pair of scissors too. Okay, so when you first get a stencil and you're about to use it for the first time, it is super important that you take a Sharpie and that you mark the back of this carrier sheet uh, with what the stencil is. So when you've, you're done with it, you've cleaned it up and you're ready to put it away, it helps you make sure that you get it put on the correct side of the carrier sheet. Okay, and that is important because if you put it on the wrong side, it's gonna be hard to get it off. So a Sharpie to have in your craft room is great. Um, and they're not gonna look like this for very long. I'm sorry, they just aren't, especially the ones that you love. Okay, so this is a, this is one of my favorites. It's called Victorian Pattern, and I have it labeled. I have used this one probably five times, and it still looks pretty good. I'm going to tell you all about stencil care. This is what it looks like after you've used it 50 or more times. And this is still okay. It's just cruddy looking. So your stencils are going to start to look like this, and that is okay. That's just proof that you love them, and it's proof that it was a good investment in your crafting stash. So when they get to looking like this, and they're not very sticky, and they're kind of stained, uh, they're still completely usable. 
And, um, okay, I'm going to just start going through some of the questions because I get questions every day. Um, what can I do if my stencil's not very sticky anymore? Well, some people are wanting to use the spray adhesive, which I have never used and I don't necessarily recommend it. I wouldn't try it. Um, but when you're stenciling, if you just lay your not so sticky stencil down over your project and you push it down good, you can hold it in place while you apply your medium. And if you put your medium like in the corners and along the edges, it sort of works like a glue to stick your not so sticky stencil to the surface. So. Um, that's the question about them being sticky. They just lose their stickiness over time. It's just a fact. Um, they never really get to have no stick at all. And sometimes when you just push them down with your hands and you put a little medium on it, you can sort of resurrect that stickiness. Okay. So, some of the questions that I get often are people will say... I'm getting a very blurry stencil impression. And that can be caused by a lot of different things, but it's hard for me to diagnose your problem if you're just telling me, in general, I'm not getting a good stencil, it's kind of blurry. If I don't know what you put it on, what kind of medium you used, how hard you pushed, how long you went over and over it, if you did any prep to that surface beforehand, it's hard for me to know. So I'm going to tell you all of that. Um, okay, the first tip that I have is do not use too much chalk paste or ink. Why? So this is ink. It has a white top. This is chalk paste. It has a, a black top. Don't use too much of either one of these because if you do, when you're using your stencil, you are likely to push too much of that medium through the fine mesh holes on your stencil and underneath and just smudge it all around. So these stencils have tons of little teeny holes in them. They're like, um, well, they're just super detailed. They're not like the stencils of the 80s. <laughs> And um, if you have too much medium chalk paste or ink and you're trying to get the whole thing covered too much, you can push it underneath the stencil and then it gets kind of blurry. So just start with less medium and you can always add more if you find out that you don't use, don't have enough. Um, and you can peek, you can lift up a corner or side to see how it looks, to get a feel. Uh, also, don't keep going over and over and over and over and over and over and over the same area. Whether you're doing it on a piece of fabric, a piece of wood, a chalkboard, a piece of tin, a piece of glass, uh, whatever it is, don't you really just need to get the, um, the medium, which is chalk paste or ink generally, you just need to get it on the top of the stencil and push through the holes and then you're going to come back with your squeegee and you're going to clean up the clumps and you're looking to see did it penetrate all those holes you can you really can see that um, but new stencilers i notice that they just want to keep going over the same area and that can also end up pushing the medium under your stencil and you get a blurry effect um, okay and the other thing is don't press too hard so this is what a small cut apart squeegee looks like. And it's, this is the, the profile of it. It's got a little angle right here. And you're just gonna apply your medium with firm but not tremendous pressure. If your squeegee is flexing, is bending like this, you are pushing way too hard. And you don't need to do that. And that can create a bad, uh, result as well. Okay, wood. Wood is tricky and so I just want to tell you, um, maybe you want to get a piece of paper. I should have suggested that at the beginning. 
but with wood. When you're stenciling on a wood sign, whether it's natural, whether it's painted, or whether it's stained. If it is wood, it has pores, and it wants to grab your medium that you're pushing through the stencil, and then it kind of wants to feather it out. And um, I don't know if you had a grandmother like this, but I had a sweet grandmother, and she always wore dark colored lipstick, and she had these lines, which I'm starting to get myself, around her lips, and her lipstick would kind of start to bleed in those lines, those little veiny, wrinkly kind of things. Well, wood is like that. Um, so what you need to do before you stencil on a piece of wood, whether it's natural, painted, or stained, is um, you need to have it smooth. So if it's a real bumpy surface, use a very fine sandpaper and get it smooth and then wipe all that dust away. And then you want to close or seal those pores down. And um, for that, I don't have my wax handy, but I frequently will use this. It's a clear matte sealer spray. You have to go outside to do it. You just need to put on one or two very light coats. And that keeps the wood pores from sucking your medium in and spreading them out. The other thing you can do is use a, um, a clear wax. It does the same thing. So if your wood uh, projects are not looking great, if they're really kind of blurry, the edges are not crisp, that may be what your problem is. You didn't treat your, your surface before you worked on it. Okay, and sometimes when you're working on stretched canvas, um, you can get a similar thing happening. So if it's a white stretch canvas, I frequently will just give it a quick, very light coat of clear matte sealer. You can buy this kind of thing at any hardware store. It doesn't have to be this brand. It's just clear matte sealer spray. I get mine at Walmart. Um, okay, so. Then the other thing is, if your surface is really bumpy, then your stencil's not going to be able to adhere 100% to it, and you are likely to sort of push it through the holes and into some of those grooves. And sometimes that's okay, because you you don't mind that look. Um, but if it's bumpy or grainy, it's just a fact of life. You're going to you're going to need to expect that it won't be perfect, um, perfect impression because your stencils need to be 100% adhered to the surface so that only your, your medium only goes through the holes in your fine mesh stencils. Okay, um, here's another thing that I hear people um, tell me about often and it's very disappointing. Okay, they tell me that their stencils are ruined because either they didn't wash them pronto, I mean really pronto, and I'll show you what I do, or they just were working so slowly that the medium basically dried in the holes in the surface before they were finished, and then they couldn't wash it out. Ink with the white caps um, is more likely to do that. Uh, so the solution is to work at a reasonable speed. Don't do an area, um, go get a cup of coffee, or talk on the phone and then come back to it. I mean, seriously, you need to get that medium on through the holes, and then that the uh, stencil itself needs to get cleaned ASAP, uh, especially with ink. Um, so that I'll have people have that issue and say they didn't know and they didn't wash their stencil right away, or uh, they didn't know that it was important to move quickly. Um, I want to write something down so I don't forget. This is like everything I know. Um, so, move quickly. 
Now, what can you do if you've let some ink, especially, or chalk paste? Chalk paste is more forgiving. It will, you can soak it in cool water and it will kind of tend to dissolve and get out of the holes in your mesh stencil so that your stencils won't be ruined. But with ink, it's harder to get it out and it may not even be possible. So, uh, Kim's asking, has anyone ever stenciled a mirror? Yeah, you want to use chalk paste. I've done it lots. Um, you want to really fuzz your stencil super well. Do I have fuzzing written down? Uh, because that is a surface that can be hard to pull your stencils up, and when you're pulling it off, you can stretch your stencils. But yeah, you use chalk paste and it's removable. No problem. Just use a little um, thing of Windex or water and a sponge and it'll come right up. Okay, so um, if you have, if you feel like you've ruined a stencil because the holes, the mesh is clogged, what can you do? Well, first of all, I recommend that you put them in a sink, a stopped up sink or a tub like this if this is big enough, with cool water to soak for a good 20 minutes. You don't want it to soak too long because soaking too long can sort of take the stickiness off your stencils. But sometimes if you soak it a little and then you use your fingers gently, you can feel the clumps and you can kind of push them away. The other thing you can do is try using a Clorox wipe. It must be antibacterial, not a baby wipe, on the front and the back, and that can sometimes um, resolve that issue. But sometimes you've just learned an expensive lesson, and um, especially if you used ink and you didn't do anything with it right away. So when I'm stenciling, as soon as I'm pulling the thing off, I'm plunking it in my little tub of water, it's got cold water in here, face down, until I can get out to the sink and clean it. But if you're not on a Facebook Live or a live video tutorial, you can take your stencil off of your project and go straight out to the sink. And you're just gonna spray it with cool water. Okay, sometimes you're gonna get this stain, like I have here. This was ink, red and blue ink, that I used. It did not ruin the stencils, it's just stained the front of it. Sometimes, if you use the stencil cleaner sponge from MagnoliaDIY.com and a teeny bit of dish soap, and you're gently, not scrubbing it hard, but gently uh, going over those areas, sometimes you can get that that stain to come up or at least to lessen. But if you want to do that, make sure you're using the stencil cleaner sponge. It has this bumpy surface. They're not expensive at all. And not a magic eraser. Because those are loaded with chemicals that you don't, do not want to use on your stencils. So alternatively, you could use a sponge in your kitchen sink with a teeny bit of dish soap just on the front and that can remove some of the stain. But the stains don't really hurt it. They just make it look like this. Which I think, I have several, my Mandela lace looks terrible too. Um, I think this is just proof that this is an awesome investment and that these stencils are reusable and have a very long shelf life if you take care of them. Um, okay, so we talked about staining we talked about loss of stick. Oh, okay, so let's talk about how do you dry your stencils. Uh, one time, I made the very bad mistake of washing a stencil that was new and laying that on my counter with the sticky side down next to my counter. And then I didn't come back to it until the morning. And it was pretty darn hard to get it off of my counter surface and it tore up pieces of the stencil. So, oh Dixie, you're so sweet. <laughs> uh, I won creator of the year a couple years ago, you're so sweet. Uh, I should have been a teacher, I don't know. 
I guess I'm getting my love for that here. Anyways, so when you wash them, you want to lay them on the counter with the sticky side up. And you can lay them on a low lid tea towel if you want. You could also lay them, if they're smaller, on this gray part of the tacky towel. And you can also use this gray part once they're starting to get dry or if you're in a hurry to basically pat them dry because there's really no lint on this and that's what that's for. So you, you don't want to lay them sticky side down on the counter. You want it to be sticky side up and you can put it on a low lint tea towel or this if you want. And if you're in a hurry, you can use this to sort of pat them dry. Then put them back on your carrier sheet. Look how bad my carrier sheet even looks. Um, on the correct side. And I know which side is the correct side because I wrote on the other one. The correct side is generally going to be shinier. But sometimes it's hard to tell. So put it back on your carrier sheet. And then I just store my stencils in a cabinet laying flat sort of organized by, by topic. Like this is a folder that has some magnolia stencils and things that are 4th of July or Memorial Day themed. That's how I do it. Everybody has a different system, but you want to lay them flat on their carrier sheet or maybe you hang them, I don't know. Um, but make sure they're on their carrier sheet and dry before you put them away. Okay. What can you do with a stencil if you used it on a piece of fabric and you didn't realize that that fabric had a ton of fuzz on it and you have like fuzz stuck in the back of your stencil? I get that question a lot too. Uh, there's really no adhesive that you can use. Um, I'm just getting the question from Laura. And in fact, I talked for five minutes about that subject just a little bit ago. So when I'm finished, come back and rewatch the beginning because um, I'll talk about the stick and what happens if you lose your stickiness or some of it. Okay, so what do you do when you get some fuzz in your stencil? That does happen sometimes. Um, like on a tea towel or if you're doing um, the stuff I love so much like this canvas duck fabric that I make into all kinds of stuffies and different things. It can sometimes leave some fuzz in the back of your stencil. You're going to want to soak it for a little while, 5-10 minutes, cool water, and then using your fingers very gently, you're on the sticky side, you're going to just kind of rub and you'll notice that some of those fibers will start to ball up and you can rub them into a ball and rub them off. That's what I've done. That's what's worked for me. Uh, you can also, when, when you're done with that part, be gentle, use an antibacterial wipe and that will help you get some of the fiber off of it. But that just happens sometimes. It's not the end of the world. Okay. Um, okay, told you about storing it. Let's talk about fuzzing. Why do we fuzz our stem stencils? Um, the reason why we fuzz our stencils is because when they are brand spanking new like this, they are super sticky. And on certain surfaces, like a mirror or a piece of glass, or a painted wood, uh, or paper. Oh, paper's the worst. Don't use your brand new stencil for the first time on paper. Just, that's a no-no. Anyway, sometimes it can stick too securely to your surface, and when you pull it up, you can end up almost stretching your stencil just a little bit, and that makes them curl which is not the end of the world. It does happen sometimes. The other thing that can happen, if you didn't fuzz it, is it can pull up the paint off of a painted wood surface, or it can pull apart a piece of paper. 
watercolor paper, a vintage dictionary page, whatever it might be. So, how do you fuzz? Okay, let's use this one because it's smaller. To fuzz a stencil, this is a tacky towel. I sometimes call it a fuzzing towel. It's from Magnolia. Do you notice? They match. They're the same green. Um, what you're going to do is take your stencil off of the backing sheet that is labeled, and you're going to lay it on your fuzzing towel, which can be washed and dried, by the way. And you're just going to lay it down and press it on and pick it up a couple of times. And you're going to notice that it will be a little bit less sticky. The other thing you could do is you could use your t-shirt. And you can fuzz it on your shirt. Or you could fuzz it on a pair of jeans. Or you could fuzz it on a low lint tea towel. Don't fuzz it on a terry cloth towel or something with a ton of fiber or else you'll end up with your brand new stencil being loaded with fibers on the back. But, so we, we fuzz stencils because uh, they're super sticky and we don't want to either ruin the stencil by stretching it too much, trying to get it off, or ruin the surface by pulling up either the paint or part of the paper or that kind of thing. So that is why we fuzz. Okay, why don't you fuzz a stencil when you're going to use it on a piece of fabric, a pillow, a t-shirt? Uh, I have one out. A uh, tea towel. We just did this one today and it is super adorable. I also did the sleeve, which I think is even more adorable. Okay, so if I was going to use that stencil on either a tea towel, a t shirt, a pillow, a zip pouch, a tote bag, some uh, painter's drop cloth, some canvas deck fabric, whatever, a fabric. You really don't need to fuzz it on a fabric before you use it on a fabric. I hope that makes sense. If you do, no biggie, but you don't need to. It's kind of a doing the same thing twice, basically. Um, so that's why we fuzz. If your stencil got stretched, so it's kind of curly, because you didn't, it didn't get fuzzed enough before you used it on whatever surface and you had to really pull to get it up, you can soak it, <coughs> excuse me, soak it for a few minutes. And then when you dry it, you can try to pat, pat it down the best you can to get it straight again and put it back on the backing sheet. Sometimes you, there's just nothing you can do about that. You'll see if I have any obvious I really don't. Ones that have been stretched a little bit. Um, okay. Oh, here's a random question that I just thought about. What if you forgot to order a squeegee? You can use a gift card or a credit card gently until you can get a squeegee with your next order. And uh, Magnolia has lots of different ones. This is a bigger one, and it has all these different angles. This one is called a small cut apart squeegee. And sometimes I will cut these in half. And you get something like this. See? Sometimes I'll cut them in fourths for even littler bits. Um, but that's called a small cut apart squeegee. And then they also have this gigantic thing, which is great if you're doing a big surface. But honestly, I just prefer the small cut apart squeegee. It's just a couple of dollars. And I've been using the same ones for around three years, and they are just fine. So that's what I recommend. Um, but if you didn't remember, you can use a gift card or a credit card, not pushing super hard because you don't want to stretch your stencil until you can get um, until you can get a squeegee. Okay, let me introduce you to just a couple other things real quick, and then we're going to talk about mediums, which is probably the most important thing to understand. These are great. These are called stir sticks, 
and I think you get 12. This is what I use to mix up my top paste or ink, and sometimes I'll scoop it out and put it on my project with this. These are, these cost pennies, and um, eventually I throw them away when they start getting really gunky looking, but these are so handy to have. Um, when you are dealing with chalk paste, let's skip ahead for just a minute because I'm thinking about it. When you're dealing with chalk paste that comes with the black lids, not even sometimes, all the time, um, these are made from, I think it's calcium bicarbonate, which is a hard surface, hard uh, substance in nature. It's like the chalk that your teacher used on the chalkboard, those hard chalk sticks, but it's made into a paste, so it has some moisture in it, and it's tinted or colored, okay? It has a tendency over time, it just does because of the what it's made of. It has a tendency to lose that moisture and to get thicker and harder and drier. So what can you do about that? You can do regular, this sounds funny, it's like brushing your teeth every night, regular chalk paste maintenance, which is every few weeks or if you want once a month, you open all of your chalk paste, you get some of these little stirs out, don't use wood, and you get some distilled water. I keep my distilled water in my little magnolia spritzer. And you just squirt a little bit or pour some little drops into your chalk paste and stir, 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 put the lid back on tight and you're good to go. But if you bought this two years ago and you haven't used it, chances are it's going to be as hard as a piece of calcium bicarbonate, as a rock, because <laughs> that's what that is. It's kind of a rock. So um, these do have, you know, they have a shelf life. These are not going to sit on your shelf for 10 years and then be usable. Um, don't buy the colors that you don't think you'll use. So buy summer colors right now, or if you're watching this on a replay in the winter, buy winter or fall colors, whatever you think you're gonna use, and use them up before you buy more jars of the same color. Uh, because it's just, it's just a fact of life, because of what it's made of, that it will start to lose that moisture that they put in it to make it a paste. This is a brand new, brand new, I took the foil off of it today, jar of chalk paste. And if I'm doing my regular chalk maintenance, I'm just gonna scrape what's on the edges down into the chalk paste, stir it up. If it's at all dry at all, I'll put a couple squirts of distilled water in it, stir it up, put my lid back on it tight. And I'm gonna store it in just a room temperature place, not like in a hot windowsill, this way. Not like this, but flat. And um, that is basically what you want to do. If you have inks, which come with a white top, inks don't dry, tend to dry out like chalk paste do, but if you're noticing that your ink is a little thicker than you would like it to be, you can use a little bit of distilled water in it just the same as the chalk paste. Okay, why can't you use bottled water or tap water? That is because those have impurities and you wanna be able to use every single little bit of this goodness that comes in these pots of ink or chalk paste. It's the same for both. You wanna use every single little bit. You don't want to grow a science experiment in here from whatever might be in your tap water or in bottled water. Um, and then come, be ready to do a project, be excited and open it up and you have something yucky growing in there. So distilled water only. And you can use distilled water for both chalk paste and ink. You'll be more likely to ever need it for chalk paste. It's part of regular 
chalk paste maintenance. Okay, this, um, this is probably the most important bit of information I'm gonna give you. And then I'm gonna think and see if there's any big things I've forgotten. Okay, so if you're writing things down, write this down. What is the difference between chalk paste with a black lid and ink with a white lid? Well, you know how God created each one of us with our own unique abilities, skills, things that we can do, things that we want to do. We're not all the same. We don't all have the same purpose, the same uses, the same skills. Think about that. And then think about chalk paste versus ink. They're different. They have different purposes, just like we do. And just like you could not ask me to do your taxes, because I would have no idea. I'm terrible at math. I don't have those abilities. That's not something that I was created for or wanted to learn. Um, you could ask me how to do a craft project, but you couldn't ask me to do your taxes. It's the same with chalk paste and ink. Okay. If you're working on fabric or ceramics or glass, you want ink. You want ink for that. Ink is for fabrics and ceramics, and it can become permanent if you heat set it, which I want to show you how to do that. My iron's not really on. I just have it out for display to show you. Okay, so if you're talking about a piece of fabric that you have inked, uh, once it's dry, and this is pretty dry, I just did this an hour and a half ago. Once it's completely dry, it's better to wait overnight. <clears throat> you're going to heat your iron up to cotton if your fabric will tolerate that. Don't use cotton setting on a piece of polyester. But most of the time, the things we're inking can stand cotton. So turn your iron on cotton, no steam. And you're going to lay your project on your iron, on your ironing board, sorry. And you're going to put a piece of parchment paper over the top of it, and cotton, no steam. You're going to just do this. See how hot it feels for three or four minutes. And then you're going to flip it over, and you're going to do the same thing. And then, this adorable tea towel that I just made today with the cutest stencil ever. Um, this can go at my sink. I can use it to dry dishes or clean up the kitchen. Most likely, my husband at some point will use this adorable tea towel to clean out the coffee pot. That's an inside joke that I've told a lot. If if you've been watching DIY Dreaming, that he always uses the cutest things I have to clean things that are going to stain it. But anyways, then it can be <clears throat> thrown in the washing machine and in the dryer, and it's going to come out looking just like this because we used ink and we heat set it. And why am I using parchment paper? <clears throat> it's really just to protect your iron. That's all. Um, don't put parchment paper and lay your iron on it and leave because you'll have a big scorch. All right, with ceramics, I don't do those very often because <clears throat> it's hard to find ceramic pieces that are going to perform well with ink. Um, the ceramic pieces that perform the best are the ones that are not super high gloss because, and that, that's almost all Dollar Tree ceramic items, they're super shiny. That gloss on them um, prevents the ink from going into the pores of the ceramic piece and melting with them, basically. So 
it's hard to find ceramics that are not so super high gloss. But if you do, you can use ink. Whoops, that's chalk paste. With the white lid and a stencil on it, and then you would heat set it in the oven. You would set it in a cold oven <clears throat> on a cookie sheet. Then you turn your oven up to 300, 350, and your piece is gonna get warm with the oven. And then you leave it in there 30 minutes-ish. You turn your oven off, and you let your piece come back to room temperature in the oven. So it's gonna slowly go up to the 300, 350, and then it's gonna slowly come back down. And this stuff will kind of melt into the fibers, the pores of your ceramics, just like it does on fabric, okay? So even if you found the right kind of ceramics to do a project, you still don't want to put it in the dishwasher or put it in a soapy hot sink to sit for a long time. You want to hand wash and just to be cautious. But if you did an ink project on a Dollar Tree mug that was super shiny, you know, it might stay for one wash, but it's probably not melded in with the ceramic piece and it probably is gonna come off. So that's why I don't tend to do a lot of ceramic projects. Okay, so ink is for fabric and ceramics. Chalk paste with the black lids is for everything else. But ink or chalk paste is not for fabric, except <laughs> there is one exception. But here's the thing. If you use chalk paste on a t-shirt, a tea towel, a pillow that might have a wet jacket lean up next to it, a tote bag, um, a pair of socks, something that could get wet or need to be washed, there's no way to make it permanent and it's gonna just smudge. And I have heard people say that they have heat set chalk paste with an iron on fabric and been okay. I don't think it's the worth the risk because this is not designed for fabric. Chalk paste is not for fabric, just like I am not designed to do your taxes. Um, so, I've also had people say, well, can't I spray it with a clear matte sealer and make it permanent so it's washable? No. Nope. So what if this was chalk paste and I put it in the um, washing machine with some other fabrics, and then when I go to retrieve everything, everything's got all this blue chalk paste all over it. That's a mess. Or what if I put it on a really cute pillow on my white sofa and somebody sat down and the back of their jacket was just a little bit damp. And then they moved over in the couch. You may end up with chalk paste on your white sofa. It's not worth the risk. And it's just, it's, this is not designed for fabric. Chalk paste is not for fabric. Just like I am not designed to do your taxes. However, there is one exception. And that is if you're making something like a banner that is not gonna get wet and you're not gonna need to wash it and you're not gonna be touching it a lot or having it brush up against your clothes or anything, then you can get away with using chalk paste because it's not gonna get wet, it's not gonna need to be washed and it's not gonna be touched a lot or rubbed up against, but still, even in that instance, I used ink for this project. Ink, ink, ink is for fabric. Chalk paste is for everything else. Um, and I say that in every video. I say what I'm using and why. But it, it's still confusing. Um, sorry, I keep getting phone calls. Okay. So... If you have used chalk paste on a pillow, a t-shirt, or something, I think it's not worth the risk to put it in a washing machine with other stuff that you might ruin as well. Um, okay, what if we did chalk paste 
on a chalkboard or on a painted metal platter. And we know for 100% certain that we're never going to want to wash this off and redo the piece. Then you can use a clear mat sealer spray, very light coats off on it after it's dry. Only use this outside. Um, and it, it is there forever. But honestly, you really don't even need to do that because chalk paste dries hard and stable. So it's not going to come off of this. It's not just going to crumble and fall off. It's hard and stable until I take a sponge, this one or a regular kitchen sponge, and some water or some Windex or something and a wet paper towel and I wash it off. Otherwise, it's going to stay. So a lot of times people are asking me, can they use a clear matte sealer spray to make something, to make some chalk paste permanent on something? And I'm just thinking, yes, you can, but maybe you don't need to. So I know this is overwhelming. <laughs> this is everything I know. Okay, so what, this is also equally as important as the difference between being an accountant and a crafter, or using chalk paste or ink. It's almost as important as that. What can you use on your stencils? Okay, you can use chalk paste. You can use ink. You can use etching cream. You can use gilding size, which is the special stuff for gold leaf. You can use all of those things, just wash promptly. You cannot use paint. That is just a risk that is not worth taking, ever. I never use paint on my stencils, never. Because what happens, whether it's an acrylic paint or, this is acrylic also, but whether it's chalk paint, acrylic paint, craft paint, latex paint, milk paint, or some kind of paint that you've made yourself, or some other kind of paint that I can't think of right now, paint dries quickly and it's permanent. So if it dries in the mesh holes in your stencil, it's not coming out ever because it's permanent. So if you want to be using your stencils until they look like this and still be able to use them, if you want to get every penny your stencils are worth out of them by using them. I mean, I'll say 50 times uh, because that's the honest truth with this big Victorian pattern stencil. Um, if you want to be able to use them even though they get looking not so great, you cannot use any kind of paint on them because paint dries quickly and it will get in the holes, the mesh of your stencils, and it will dry and it dries hard <clears throat> and it dries permanent. And no amount of soaking or using an antibacterial wipe or using your thumb to kind of rub it is going to resolve that. So just know that um, you don't want to go to Walmart and buy a bunch of this kind of stuff. Or use what you have at home that is a paint on your stencils. Ever. If you're going to invest in a stencil, then use the right thing on it so you can get every penny out of it. Um, okay, here's another question that I get a lot. And it's a common misconception. People think that chalk paste this. Oh, this is what it looks like when it's brand new. It has a silver foil on it. Open one notes. People think that chalk paste is the same thing as a, a chalk paint because they both have the word chalk in them. And they both have some calcium bicarbonate, which is what chalk is, in them. But chalk paste 
and chalk paint are not the same thing at all. Paint is paint is paint is paint is paint. And it's not chalk paste. So don't be confused by that or led into believing that you can use chalk paint, the same as chalk paste. Chalk paint is something you would paint your surface with before you stencil, but it's not something you would put on top of your stencil. Oh, I remember one thing that I, that I definitely wanted to tell you, and this is completely out of order. But talking about moving quickly, suppose I am using this stencil on a project and I'm wanting to do different colors or I'm needing to like have really um, precise, you know, areas where things are different colors. Either I'm using chalk paste or ink, okay? Suppose I'm doing that and I'm moving really slow. Well, sometimes when you pull it up, whether it's chalk paste or ink, it's going to have dried in the mesh of your stencil if you're moving super slow. And that's really not a huge problem because you can get it out. But it will pull up the chalk paste that you've pushed through the holes in this onto your design, your surface. And it doesn't look good. So here's the, the fix for that. Okay, and you want to work in rows. Like this area, then this area, then this area. So once I was done with this area right here and ready to move on to this one, and I'm going slow, I'm going to just lift it up enough just to peek and really to not have it stuck to the surface anymore, and then I'm going to lay it down. And it won't hurt anything, and then I'm going to work on this area. And I'm going to lift the whole thing up to that area and lay it back down in the same spot, and then I'm going to work on this last area. And that makes it so that this, the medium, chalk paste or, or uh, ink, is not drying in your stencil and you won't pull it up. It's drying here on your surface that you're applying it to. So you can do that. You can lift up a small area at a time to prevent your stencil from pulling up your chalk paste or ink if it's a project that's taking a really long time. Oh, let's see. Do you guys have any questions that I have not answered? I know this is the longest video I've probably ever made, and it's most crammed with information. But it's all information that you need, and nothing that I've said here is rocket science. Um, it's really not. You just need to know what is for what, how to clean things, how to use things, what not to do and that's what i have tried to go over um so if you if you came on late and you still have questions most likely i addressed all of those earlier in this video so rather than asking me <laughs> to type out something that i spent 20 minutes explaining in this video just go back and watch the beginning of this video on replay and you can save it um, and come back and watch it on replay in a month or in a week uh, if you want sometimes things need to kind of go through your brain a couple times but like anything else you will get the hang of it and for all of those people out there that say I used my stencil and it one time or two times and it didn't turn out good and I don't, I'm going to quit. I'm not going to use them anymore. This is what I would tell you. Did you get on a bicycle once or twice and do perfect riding a bicycle? No, you did not. You have to get the feel for it. You have to get the hang of it. Riding a bicycle is not rocket science. It just takes some practice. Same thing with using stencils and any of these things I've just shown you. Um, you'll get the hang of it the more you do it. I can kind of feel when I should stop. I am not uncomfortable handling my stencils or washing them 
or patting them dry because I have gotten the hang of it because I have practiced. So that's what I would tell you. Don't give up if the first time you rode your bicycle you fell over and skinned your knee or your project didn't turn out great because that is what is supposed to happen. That is normal. You just have to learn and practice. And then you'll be able to whip out things like this and your friends and family are gonna say, oh my gosh, seriously, you made that? Wow. And you're, you're gonna be able to say, yeah, I did. Um, and it's not hard. Nothing here is hard, it just takes a little bit of practice. Okay, so if you want to look at any of these stencils, any of these different gadgets, or chalk paste, or ink, or squeegees, or anything else, um, you can do that by, I laid down, a, I pinned a link right here, it says DIY Dreaming, there. it's a yellow star heart, star heart, and then below it is my link. It's magnoliadiy.com. All smushed together, no space in there. So it's magnoliadiy.com. If you put a space in between Magnolia and DIY, it will take you to a barbecue selling platform. Uh, I don't know why, but <laughs> that is just what it does. So if you want to go to my website, it's magnoliadiy.com. All smushed together. And um, if you have questions outside of the things that I have talked about, um, feel free to ask. If you want to link to something specific, like, I don't know, a surface or something, or something that I haven't talked about today, feel free to ask. Um, but if you have questions dealing with all this stuff, the best thing is for you to just watch this video on replay from the start to the finish. And most likely, I've talked so long I unscrewed the lid to my head and poured out every bit of knowledge I have about this subject. Most likely, um, the answers are here in this video. You're just going to need to go back and watch it. Thank you, Jennifer. She says she sprinkled the love. So if, if you have friends that use stencils um, or ink or chalk paste, feel free to sprinkle this video to your social media because it is I mean, I have basically told you everything that you need to know from every subject from distilled water <laughs> to antibacterial wipes. I mean, I've told you everything I know, so feel free to sprinkle. All righty. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will um, see you tomorrow. I'm not sure which craft project we'll be doing because I have multiple in process. But it will be something that will be quick and easy. You don't have to be a professional crafter or an artist to do it. It will be something that might be a little bit unusual. And most likely it will be something that either involves faith, family, or flowers. So if those things sound good to you, oh, and it will be affordable because I'm all about that. Um, if that sounds interesting, then just take two seconds to look to see if you've liked and followed this page, DIY Dreaming, say something to me in the comments, do a this or a this, this is a thumb and this is a heart. Um, and let me know if you want um, any links. Okay, you guys have a wonderful day 